Welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here. We're live from the SEC studios in White Bear Lake. And we got another very fascinating show for you today. This is stuff every citizen needs to know for your local elections, local community. You need, we're going to uh, explore questions, what's going on in Maplewood, but it's happening everywhere. And that's why if you're anywhere, you need to hear, watch this show to understand how government works, how it needs to work, and just how to function within your local government. And uh, before we get into that, though, um, I have an announcement to make that I've been making quite often on this show. And that is there's a fundraiser for Ray Woodstrand. Well, you may say, why do we want to have a fundraiser for Ray Woodstrand? Well, back in um, a couple months ago, uh, he lives on the east side in St. Paul, and he was uh, beat up pretty good and had some severe brain injury. And um, there's just a lot of medical bills involved with that. And so Ray, who works here at SEC, um, is just a great guy, fun-loving guy, nice guy, and uh, it's a tragic accident that happened to him, and he's got huge medical bills. So uh, we're going to show a little uh, announcement for this fundraiser. Now, Nathan, that's number one on the uh, DVD. Is that ready to go? Uh, it's getting ready. But what I want you to know, it's October 5th uh, from 1030 to 3 o'clock at the Goodrich Golf Dome. Now, the Goodrich Golf Dome is about a mile south of Highway 36 on White Bear Avenue. And uh, there's going to be a miniature golf tournament. It's $20, uh, the, the fundraiser. There's be uh, raffles, silent auction, uh, games. Uh, let's see what, oh, Little Caesars Pizza is going to be there. Uh, a lot of fun things. Now, <clears throat> before we see this advertisement, I just want you to think about something first. I'm really good at miniature golf, okay? I'm, I'm really good. And, you know, I don't brag about these things, but I think it's important for this one because this is for Ray and I don't think anybody can beat me. So uh, if you think you're really good at miniature golf or even if you don't think you're really good at miniature golf, come on out and try to beat me. Um, I don't think you can, but it'd be for a good cause. And so uh, that's why I need to brag a little bit about my skills in miniature golf. <laughs> okay, come out, have, have fun. But here's the, uh, here's the announcement for the fundraiser. was clinging to life after being severely beaten by a mob of teenagers while walking home on the east side of St. Paul. Ray is an extremely positive and caring person and there is no way to make sense of this crime, but there is a way we can help. Putts for Ray, a fundraiser and silent auction held at the Goodrich Golf Dome in Maplewood on Saturday, October 5th from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. A $20 donation to Ray's fund includes mini golf, prizes, raffles, food, games, and fun for everyone. Donations for goods and services are being accepted for the silent auction and raffle prizes. Ray is improving each day, but still has a long road of therapy ahead. Please join us in this positive effort to bring help and healing to Ray Widstrand and his family. All right, putts for Ray, October 5th. If you're seeing this on a replay, uh, it will be too late, but that doesn't mean you cannot, you, you still can donate uh, to raise uh, medical expenses. So, okay, now we're going to get into our show now, and this is important stuff. And, and just to start it off, I'm going to show a clip. I was watching KSTP News, and I see this familiar face on there. I hear this name. And I just go, whoa, what's this person? While well, they were talking about the new Minsher uh, sign-up, the new health state uh, health insurance um, plan that they got going now, where if you don't have insurance, you can now sign up through the state of Minnesota. And so all of a sudden I see they're talking about John Nephew. And they brought him on as a small business owner. Now, he is a small business owner that uh, owns a number of uh, games and sells games. Uh, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about the name of those games. 
but he was kind of presented as this unbiased small business owner. Now, in my opinion, John Nephew is the local resident communist. Okay, he's he's for um, he's for single hauler trash. He took away the private business and the garbage collection in Maplewood. Uh, he got unelected because of that. And so I want you to watch this clip, just see what he has to say, and understand where his govern governmental philosophy is and see if you're really getting the straight story or not. All right, let's watch this clip. John Nephew of Maplewood is one of those who's logged on. So far, he likes what he sees. He's looking for coverage for his family, which also includes a wife and three kids. And based on what he's seen so far, he could save up to $600 to $700 per month compared to a plan he now has through his small business. This is going to offer a better deal that either we need to sign up for or we need to go back to our insurance company and say, are you going to match these prices? <laughs> Nephew is president of Atlas Games, a Twin Cities company that creates board games. He's got fewer than 10 employees, and he says he's likely to save money on their health insurance as well. But Nephew, again, says he was surprised by what he saw, and he sent out a tweet about it. He was so excited. However, he also says he needs to do some further investigating to make sure the numbers he's seen are not too good to be true. So there is some due diligence left to be done. If the numbers are as good as he's seen, he'll probably get insurance for all of his employees through Minsure and maybe even qualify for tax credits. Eric? Thanks, Tom. And if you still... All right. Now, this, this is the big story here. Um, this was the same story he was given to the Maplewood residents regarding garbage hauling, in that he's saying, because you get it through the government, you're going to get a better deal on your garbage hauling. It hasn't turned out to be true for many people, and um, he was just exploring and saying, boy, he's getting a great deal uh, through Amsure, uh, Minnesota Sure. So um, he's biased. And this is, this is not the straight story here, but John Nephew was unelected. Now, if you would have seen the games that were on the list of games that he sell, one of them is Let's Kill, it, and another game is called Corruption and Beer Money and uh, a number of games. But in some of these games, it talks about how to lie to your constituents and lie through the political process. And so John is, in my opinion, skilled at that type of behavior. And so a lot of the words, I think a lot of the words that he were, was using in this act was, or this um, news report was there to play his game that he plays. Now, John was unelected, okay, because of the garbage hauling incidents and, and taking away the private market. Uh, in, in Maplewood. And uh, another uh, person basically saw the writing on the wall and left. And the people that have been elected so far in Maplewood since then have been for pro-markets, pro-freedom of choice in, in, in business, and where the people get to decide how to dispose of their property. Uh, but not without government regulation. I mean, sure, they should be watched, make sure that they're not uh, violating people's constitutional rights. But John was one that got unelected. And now we're coming up to another election season in Maplewood. And I want to introduce you to two people who I believe uh, uh, share or have the right values for Maplewood citizens and believe in the free enterprise system. And so I want to welcome uh, Margaret Behrens, who's running for city council, and Diana Longry, who's running for mayor. Thank oh, you. Oh, glad to have you on the show again. Well, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, now we're going to get right into it here because we brought up the garbage issue, uh, garbage hauling issue. That issue's still on the table, isn't it? Yes. Well, I can tell you from my door knocking out there, people are still concerned and upset about the way that it was done. Mm -hmm. I think most people realize that at least right now in this point in time, you can't necessarily break a contract because right. you got a contract, it's a five-year contract, and, you know, it is what it is. But they don't like 
the philosophy of how it was done. Basically, we are not going to listen to the citizens. We're going to do what we think is right for you. And I have come across, I can't believe how many people who went to those meetings who wanted to share with me how upset they were that they were told to shut up and sit down or that the doors were shut or that they were told that the police are going to be called if you can't be quiet. Uh, people are still, again, they're stinging from it. Right. And so they're looking for people who are not of that philosophy. They want people who are open to citizen input, who want to listen to the citizens and then incorporate that into the decisions that are made for the community. Well, uh, philosophy, nature, character, yes. uh, just how mean and derogatory they mm -hmm. were to people in the whole process, I, I think is a, is a big thing. Mm -hmm. and, and this is not how you're characterizing this race. It's how I'm characterizing it. <laughs> okay, I want to make that clear for everybody out there. But I, I really see this race. And why I brought up John Nephew again is because there's still that old guard. There's still that philosophy out there. And they're trying to be elected. It's uh, uh, Nora Slawick, uh, Kathleen Juneman, and Mary Lee Abrams. I don't know much about Mary Lee Abrams, but if she's running around with those two, I consider them angry women. And I consider uh, you, both of you, the nice women. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Thank you. That's how I'm characterizing this race. People who are respect, respectable, you respect people, right. you, you talk nice to people, you listen, and you engage. Right. And that's not what I see from the other people. And, and I think it's very important for people to realize that Nora Slawick, who is running for mayor of Maplewood, uh, uh, opposed to me, that she is endorsed by Will Rosbach. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he doesn't give out his endorsements lightly. Right. So when he gives out an endorsement, you know that that is somebody that he has vetted, that he feels is consistent with his values. His philosophy. His yeah. pro philosophy, the way that government, their version of good government is run. And some folks may say, well, how do you really know that they, you know, that they've worked together, of course, they probably know each other, that kind of thing, except that, you know, I think it's also important to let citizens know that I have emails of uh, communications. And during that time, remember back when, when uh, Mr. Will Rosbach wanted to eliminate wood burning in Maplewood? And that was another one of those issues that was a very big topic. Well, there were emails between him and Nora Slawick and oh, John wow. Nephew and including Kathy Juneman. Uh, as a reference, uh, where uh, Miss Norslawick says to Will Rosbach, I am looking forward to working with you, and then basically okay. on the wood smoke issue. And the content of this email was, we need to go slow with this so that people won't get upset. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I have that email, and so I know that they've been working together on these kinds of issues that, again, says, you know, let's work it out slow so the citizens won't know, so they won't be upset, mm. and so that we can do what we think is best. Right. And I, I just think that's wrong. Instead of having the discussion with the citizens. Now, Margaret, right. I've, I've seen you run meetings. Sure. Um, and you, you're not that way. <laughs> I mean, you're, you, oh. you, you let people communicate, you right. give everybody a, a fair chance, yep. you get the discussion out there, the, the give and take goes on, right. but you've been involved in many activities uh, around the area, right. so why don't you just kind of tell us some of these that you've been involved with. Okay, well, I serve, I'm you know, serving my fifth year on the Ramsey County League of Local Governments, uh -huh. And I w just uh, finished my term as chair for the Ramsey County Children's Services Citizens okay. Review Panel, and that's for human services for Ramsey County. Mm -hmm. I am on the committee for the 
Lake White Bear Lake Level Resolution Committee okay. to try to figure out how we can save the drinking water in the aquifer and try to raise the lake levels on White Bear. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? Boy, I have <laughs> <laughs> where, where to start. Of course, I go yeah. to Lakeview Lutheran Church okay. um, down on 61 and County Road C. And I have, oh boy, the Maplewood Historical Society, the Minnesota Territorial Pioneers. Um, I'm on, I'm trying to think of all the different meetings that I go to. Oh, and Low Income Committee, I'm uh, going to be uh, starting to go to those meetings okay. as well because we're having a lot of issues with uh, yeah. low income. Well, uh, you obviously know how government works and the function of government and handle meetings and handle people and oh, you're, sure. you're out there. This is sure nothing new to you. Well, to and say I, the do, least. I try not to think of it as ha handling people. I, I want to serve people. Right. right. Well, there, and that's, that's the huge thing because you are a representative. Right. You, you would be representing people in serving people what what they're looking for and what they want right. and so a big deal now uh, people you can call uh, with comments or questions and we do have somebody on the phone with a comment or question so caller uh, you have a comment or question we don't have any uh, oh there you go thanks Kim Kinley for this excellent show you bet the city of Maplewood and the election my experience with Nora Solwick has been this. First of all, I seen her on the cable TV uh, resident, and I think it was uh, yourself who was at a meeting, a town hall forum, which was only about an hour, and they had they went around and spent half the time introducing everybody in the audience, and there was like four right. elected officials there, right. and so there was no real time for discussion or conversation or dialogue or bringing issues. They allowed you, just because you were very persistent to ask a question, at the end, and uh, she had no conversation. She was disrespectful, uh, and she interrupted you. She was dishonest. Uh, I, there's nothing positive about the way she approaches communication with uh, residents. The other thing is I talked to the former city manager of Maplewood about if he had any contact with Nora Solwick when she was a state representative, uh -huh. and apparently she was to come to a meeting once of Maplewood City Council to give a legislative up update, and she stormed in the office in the, the morning before she was there, and she screamed at the uh, city manager that he was not to undercut her or have anybody to undercut her. It's as if she was paranoid and she thought uh, black helicopters were going to come down on her. Wow. I think that uh, she, was, she was just going to be there for a couple minutes to give a, you know, one of these uh, uh, boilerplate legislative updates, and she went half zonked on, out on him, it sounds like. So I wanted to uh, uh, relay those sorts of experiences well, that I have now yes. with her. And yeah. my question is, why is there no... Why is she avoiding all kinds of contact now with any kind of media where people could question her on her behavior and her conduct and her stability and her views? Well, that, Thank you. Thank that, you for the show. Very, very good question. And I'm going to add to that, are there any debates coming up for city the, council well, races? You know, there are, well, there is at least one that I know has been scheduled, and I think there probably will be a second one. Okay. But... October 15th, I understand, uh, is going to be one at the St. John's Hospital. Now, there what was... What time is that at? Well, there was a little bit of a mix-up because originally when they scheduled it, the young man who scheduled me and made sure I was available said 7.30 to 8.30 uh, in the evening. Well, then uh, afterwards, then he sent back an email saying that, whoops, it was really 7.30, 8.30 in the morning. Well, I had to inform him that... I'm not quite certain if I will be able to make it because I have a trial uh, that morning at 9 o'clock, which may or may not go on because we're sort of on call, sure. so it's hard to yeah. know. Uh, so I haven't heard if that now is a confirmed date or not for October 15th at St. John's Hospital. And then typically the League of Women Voters will have a debate as well, or a forum actually is what they are. And I have not gotten any information yet on Heard that. Nothing. No. Uh, how about the League of Men Voters? Have they, <laughs> you know, I haven't heard anything. Okay. Uh, there's probably a new group starting with that name yeah, here. There you go. <laughs> to have a debate versus a forum. Yes, <laughs> that's right. And you know, I would really love to have a debate because I think that 
when candidates are able to debate a topic respectfully, right. it gives the the voters uh, another view of that candidate. Right. Can they think on their feet? Can they hear what the other candidate is saying and then be able to come back with either facts right. or other argument to either persuade or to rebut. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's an important skill for an elected official. Very important. And, and in these forums, you don't really get to do that. Yeah, no, uh, you don't. Uh, do you know of any others that you've heard? No, that, those are the okay. the so, ones Well, I, I just think that's crucial and mm -hmm. it's not happening. You know, and, and two, in my opinion, isn't enough. No. You know, especially if you only got one during the day. Right. I mean, and most people do have nights available. Mm -hmm. Not right. everybody, but that's kind of the bigger one. Right. So. Well, and, uh, you know, the, the first opportunity, the St. John's one, uh, having that in the evening, uh, it just happened to fall on a day I didn't have a meeting. I'm in my second term at the Ramsey Conservation District. Uh -huh. So we have a lot of committee meetings that I sure, go to right. um, because I also serve on Valamo. And uh, this was the one night of the week I did not have one meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so I was all set to go to that. But okay. we'll have to wait and wow. see. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to set a little guidelines here so people know what to expect. We're getting a lot of phone calls. So we're going to have this caller come on. But uh, then I'm going to ask my question. So kind of trade them off one because I have my issues, and you all know I have issues. So, uh, <laughs> okay, caller, do you have a comment or question? Well, I have a comment. Okay. I have uh, uh, been involved in the last uh, endorsement uh, deal over here on Cope Avenue with uh, Democrats. Um, I, I found it very, very interesting that both Nora and Miss Abrams were uh, couldn't say enough good things about Kathy Juneman, and they stated both of them that they wanted her to be their role model. Now I mean her a role model that gives the citizens the mm -hmm. finger right. and is so disrespectful to them, talking under her breath in the microphone and and being so rude. But they both were very emphatic that yeah. they wanted her to be the role model. And <laughs> one of the other things that both um, Mayor Longry, and I can say Mayor Longry because Mary has on uh, her signs mayor, uh, and she, of course, obviously isn't our mayor, the poor mayor that you can't see, but uh, Mayor Longry, uh, she can say, this is what I did. And Margaret right. Barron's could say, this is what I have done. Right. You don't have those promises, oh, I'm going to. This is what I've done. Come, Don't tell me what you're going to do. Tell right. me what you've done for right. people. And one thing you can do is go down County Road, see, you go, go to Lakeview Lutheran Church, and you can see that they are having rain gardens put in by uh, the conservation district that Margaret Barron uh -huh. uh, start working on some time ago, and now it's finally coming, uh, it's reality now, and it's, it's okay. going to be beautiful when yeah. it's done, but thanks, I won't take up any more of your all right. time. Thank you. Uh, all right, what do you have to say about all that? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the, yeah. the call and the kind words, that's really nice. Um, and yes, it's going to be an awesome project, the, the rainwater gardens are actually going in the ground. We hope that they are done tomorrow, actually, but the rain, I don't know if the rain's going to delay it or what, but they're, they're, it's a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. So I had s given a proposal. I had the idea when I was first elected or to my first term at the mm -hmm. Conservation District, and you know, if you are familiar with the area, down on 61 in County Road C, that's where the church is. And you know that there's those scrappy woods there. Uh, Cal's gas station used to be there. They had right. issues with their tanks leaking yeah. and um, everything. But that, you know, they took that out. The station's gone. It's kind of overgrown. It, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to work to get that corner mm -hmm. cleaned up. It'd be really nice for the community. I, I got it all uh, set up. I got some a proposal written. The church took it. They, um, you know, applied for grant funding, cost sure. share funding, to have the um, plans done and have have it partially paid for. Well, you know, we because we had to wait until we paid for the roof of the church. In the meantime, some special legacy funding came through, uh -huh. and this project's going to be paid for one hundred percent. 
and it yeah, I tell you, everything happens for a reason. So mm -hmm. you know where the money so, is. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, we do. And now we're going to have some really exciting uh, groundwater protection uh, BMPs in the ground, and you'll be able to see them at work. Yeah. Yep. So if well, you have time, good. swing by and yeah. check them out. Uh, and so you can help other people with that and Absolutely. give them heads up on that. Uh, right. But one thing the caller mentioned was just the attitude of uh, uh, Kathleen Juniman and just her, uh, well, flipping people off in the audience, turning her back to them while they're speaking at visitor's presentation right. or even during a, a, a specific topic that's right. up there, um, just in making snide comments, just to dehumanizing people right. as as well very often uh you know that's not you guys no <laughs> you know? absolutely not but and you've seen this happen oh absolutely mm -hmm. and and i i watch meetings all the time because i'm usually at my own meetings when the council meetings are going on so i always watch them and replay and stuff mm -hmm. and you can hear her microphones on you can right. hear her making rotten comments yeah. Uh, the up, obscene gestures that she makes, uh, the body language, right. but calling people crazy and, and the other things she says, the comments she right. makes, that's uncalled for. And I right. don't think anybody that um, tries to control the people like that is fit for service. Yeah, you just don't have to do it. No. It's just well, not necessary. No, There's absolutely so not. many other ways to deal and, with it. And Tim, I have to tell you that years ago I supported Kathy Judiman. Oh. She was extremely passionate that the city really needed to have its own dispatch mm -hmm. right at City Hall. Mm -hmm. So our emergency services, they were coming from our hometown dispatch right there, and we'd have better response times. Mm -hmm. So I, I would go to her house, pick her up, and actually bring her right here to this studio oh. so she could be on the Bob Zick show. Okay. And she did it quite frequently, and she Boy. liked to come up here so she could... Um, uh, she could right. talk to uh, Fletcher, the, who was the sheriff at the yeah. time, and, and she was basically ambushing Fletcher on it. Okay. So um, she was up here quite a bit, she, of course, and we see how she treats Bob Zick now. Right. He helped her get elected, and she well, she's just well, turned this, herself on him. This and goes the to citizens. the point, yeah, this goes to the point of eternal vi vigilance. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> vigilance. Right, I right, right. We need to watch what people do we and do. see if they change. And go away from what they right. promised to do to to go someplace she's, else. She's totally turned around, and she's yeah. really turned her back to the citizens. Yeah. Well, a co uh, one question I have, and and it's been coming to me through various people, is uh, okay, the the financial loss of the community center and the ambulance services, kind of tie those both in in together here. But uh, do you have any? solutions or any ideas to how to stop this financial loss okay if uh, well i went on this one if you want to go first but then i want to <laughs> jump okay. in there <laughs> well both of these issues are are very important to our community first of yeah. all and these issues actually were discussed at great length while i was mayor previously mm -hmm. and we talked about different types of options mm -hmm. and with regard to the ambulance uh, fund. It's uh, what they call an enterprise fund, which means that it's supposed to at least break even. Right. And the community center is also right. an enterprise fund. Right. And again, that is uh, under state law, uh, uh, supposed to attempt to try to break even. Mm -hmm. And I think there was the best of intentions when both of these funds were set up, thinking that they would be able to break even. But I think that in many ways, they have flaws within their model. Right. And okay. it's because of those flaws that they're not able to be enterprise funds. Because until you figure out what the flaws are in that model, you will not be able to overcome those reasons why we always seem to never break even and we always have a deficit all mm -hmm. the time right. that has to then be taken care of in other ways. Right. And so what I would propose is that, first of all, we need to do a forensic audit yes. of it, which is not the same as a regular audit no. at all. A regular audit just says, do all the lines balance? Well, sure, all the lines balance. Of course they do. Right. But a forensic audit actually goes in greater detail and, and traces where the money has been, 
where it came from, where are there certain parts of the process that maybe could be improved. Well, what, what segments are making money, what yes. segments are losing money, and, and why is that the case? Mm -hmm. uh, do we have enough memberships? Right. Are membership prices too high and is that driving people away? Are they too low? You know, uh, right. those and, type and, of and, issues. And there's so so that, that's one of the first steps that has to be done to do a real uh, fiscal analysis of right. it to determine one is it a problem with the model and we just tweak the model and then it'll be okay because you know governmental entities do have enterprise funds all the time yeah. Maplewood has several other enterprise funds that are you know making money hand over fist hmm. Uh, the recycling is my understanding. The recycling enterprise fund is uh, doing very well, even though we're 16 out of 16 in the list of recycling cities in Maple in in, uh, in, in, in Ramsey area, yeah. in Ramsey County. Uh, and, and but the same um, philosophy goes to looking at our ambulance service and right. trying to understand, you know. And of course, there's always that piece about Medicare. Medicare mm -hmm. only covers so much. But Medicare has certain levels throughout the country, and uh, and depending upon how far away mm -hmm. you are from a hospital, and other different parameters, and it's complicated. But it's not that complicated that we can't figure it out. Well, they they need to make a profit, or at least what, break or, even, or at least break mm -hmm. even, because otherwise, you know, my understanding is there's anywhere from from both funds, uh, five hundred to a million dollars a year that we're losing mm -hmm. in Maplewood. <coughs> Um, but uh, the other problem to me is that there's no competitive marketplace, and that's what's really costing the money because there's no restraint. There's no uh, market forces coming in here so that they feel that they need to make. They'd got, they would have gone bankrupt years well, they, ago. There's no incentive to re-examine the model. Right. There's, none, there's none. no incentive to figure out what are the flaws in the model to make it so that it is more streamlined and more uh, cost efficient. Because if you have no competition, you don't have to figure out what your flaws are. Right. And I think that, unfortunately, that's where we're at. Right. That we have no incentive to figure out where our flaws are. And yeah. oftentimes, elected officials, when they get elected, they don't want to point out where the flaws are because then they may not get reelected. Yeah, okay, uh, because then people will well, say, "Oh my could, goodness, they're anti that yeah, they're anti government." But right. that's asking for accountability. No, is not the same as saying, "Oh, I'm against having government." Yeah. I think having accountability for citizens and taxpayer dollars right. is should be the number one responsibility of any elected official. And that's, that's right. And then you can serve the citizens better right. and best with the governmental entity that you are a part of, yeah. rather than defending that governmental <laughs> entity. Now, Margaret, you've been just dying <laughs> yeah, to get I, I, am, I am, but yes. they're saying there's a phone call, and I hate well, to keep them waiting. Oh, <laughs> do you? Yeah. Well, let's finish this issue, because they may take us to another issue. So okay. you just had some comments. and Okay. Well, when I started at the Conservation uh, District in 2008, they uh, were in the hole, of course. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2012 was the first year that they ever ran in the black. Mm -hmm. And mm. I tell you, I you have to get really creative. Mm. And you have to get in there and look at everything and see where the holes are. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, um, like Diana, it's in the details. Mm -hmm. It really yes. is. And I said, we have to get in there. We've got to see what's going on. Why... It, you have to ask the questions. Why aren't people coming? Right. Why aren't people using your programs? Do people know you have programs? Mm -hmm. What about your management? Right. And you have to keep looking at your business model mm -hmm. and, and rethinking how things are working and how they're not working. And, right. and I tell you, um, I was so excited for the, for the conservation district running in the black and having a surplus it was awesome yeah <laughs> so and i i really want to take on and the that, community that was center. a large part due it, to your efforts and oh your absolutely. Work. absolutely absolutely yeah. so you get creative marketing and uh outreach and education and that mm. can work in any circumstance right right, right. so I, i'm really excited okay. about taking on the challenge of the right. community center well margaret you wanted to call her so call her do you have a comment or question 
Well, uh, well, I have a question for Diana. Okay. And I will ask the question, then I'll hang up and listen to her answer. Uh, what can she do to keep from keep the most famous man in Maplewood from wreaking havoc upon the city? <laughs> that might get a call from the most famous man in Maplewood. I, I well, dare you to call the most famous man in Maplewood. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, I appreciate that question because it it really actually speaks to a bigger issue, in that how do you engage everybody in your community because not everybody uh, is satisfied maybe with the direction you're going right. or that there is something that happened in their neighborhood that hasn't been addressed mm -hmm. and how do you engage people mm -hmm. in such a way that they feel one that their voice counts two that they're being listened to and that part of three lastly part of what they're saying is being incorporated into the decision making that is being done by the elected officials mm -hmm. and i believe it is very important at our maplewood city council meetings that we have our citizen comments section of the meeting or at visitors the, presentation right at the, at the beginning yeah. of the council meeting so we when at i was certain. mayor at right. time certain because we right. had it at 6 30 to seven or thereabouts and on then TV. on TV and you know it was not any trouble and hmm. and then I think that we should also go back to having the citizens forum or what it used Absolutely. to be called the, the mayor's forum right the first Saturday of every month because it's an opportunity for citizens to come to City Hall to be and talk with the mayor for an extended period of time and also I always had the city manager there and I think that that is important because in a plan B city after all that's the person who runs the city so you should have that person at the citizen forums so that that way if there's something that that city manager can help with right that minute yeah. you are being responsive right that minute and that and I also think it's important at council meetings to open up the meeting to citizen comments on each agenda item before right. you take the vote right. and I did that before and when I'm elected I will do that again it's because so that it is, is where citizens have the most input and the most uh, ability to have control over what's happening in their community is at that municipal level at their city council meeting yeah. and participating in the process and Margaret I'm sure you're the same way about that right <laughs> absolutely I, I invite everybody well, and this is yeah. one of the issues that I say anybody in any city needs to, that this discussion applies to anybody in any city. Is your city doing this? Or have they, like Maplewood, try to uh, eliminate your voice from an input to them uh, publicly and so that you can get your message out to everybody else in the city at, at the same time? And uh, you're open for you're you're for this open government. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. Hey, and I I'm so in favor of even taking the council on the road. I would love to have meetings in South Maplewood. Mm -hmm. I I feel like everybody in South Maplewood, they're like out there on their own. Sure. And they shouldn't feel that oh, that's way. That's a good idea. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I want them to feel it, they're part of the hometown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we got another caller uh, on the line. Caller, do you have a comment or question? Yeah, I do. Uh, thank you for Mary Longry and uh, Mrs. Barons for taking calls tonight because you're both proven products. Right. Uh, I would like to know uh, your dollar and cents attitude on on uh, upcoming events with the city of Maplewood, and also uh, Mayor Longry. Uh, you know some of these uh, things that come up. You know that don't pass the smell test. I hope that you challenge them and um, look into it. Um, and Tim, I just have one uh, one kind of a bad uh, vibe that came from you in your opening statement. Okay, when you were talking Give about the us. man that uh, was in an accident, that wasn't an accident. That was a racially did I say motivated accident? beating. You did. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That. Well, thank you for thank correcting you. me there. I, yeah, that was no accident. Definitely. Uh, thanks, caller. Well, I mean, that's a, a great question he asked, and. In the fact of uh, um, 
really digging into things. And this is something I, I saw uh, when you were mayor when I, the city manager, Chuck All, uh, was just, he wasn't, he was selling. He's a salesman. He tries to sell things. He's actually, in my opinion, more of a, a religious type preacher trying to get people to do things um, with a zealotry, but it's not necessarily all the truth that's there. Mm -hmm. And I saw you really challenge uh, the city employees that are coming and saying, we need money for this and this and right. this. And, 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 and I, you know, o occasionally I will uh, run into some citizens when I'm out door knocking and, and you can see at the bottom of the screen there, I got my, my tennis shoes on because I actually came here from <laughs> door knocking. <laughs> But, uh, you know, occasionally I will run across a citizen, I'll get a little pushback, and they'll say, well, you know, you, uh, one gentleman said to me, um, you know, you asked too many questions. I said, well, that's because I didn't have the information mm -hmm. that I needed in order to make the proper decision, right. a well-thought-out, so a balanced decision for the citizens. And I really do believe that that is a duty that elected officials have is to be informed about what it is that they are making decisions about. And mm -hmm. so when I hear somebody giving, uh, you know, an explanation, which on the surface seems, right, um, you know, uh, reasonable, but then there's some words that are inserted that could be interpreted in different ways, then that leads me to ask that question. Which interpretation do I select? Right. Do I select the interpretation that I am making within my own mind based upon what I would like it to be? Mm -hmm. Or do I have the interpretation based on asking for more details, more facts, so I can figure out which the interpretation is that's the right. correct one that is really the accurate picture of this right. issue. Well, and this is what I saw in Crystal, Grant, other cities uh, where the employees would come to their city and say, this is what happened, and it wasn't what happened. And so, but the, the uh, city representatives don't have information that it's their source and there's this disconnect between the the representatives uh, and the employees right and, and sometimes, if the employees yeah. aren't shooting straight with you you have to dig deep right and, and sometimes uh, city employees may not actually even have all the details because right. they were given that information from somebody else who is spinning something in a direction they want it to go and and so unfortunately that's just the way it is in politics everybody's spinning a plate or two right and you got to figure out which direction the plates are spinning in and are you going to be able to figure out how they're all spinning around and figure out where they're going to land right yeah well <laughs> <Yeah>. okay <laughs> You know, that, that is pretty much it. Yeah. Woo. Thank goodness I'm not a politician. Right. I am a public servant. I don't want to be a politician. Oh, you can That's spin not, some plates. Uh, no, I don't want to do any spin. Good ones. <laughs> Good ones. Um, you, you, you know, in my current office, too, there's not a whole lot that goes on there that's uh, very controversial at all. But I do, um, you know, I get my packet and I read through it and stuff. And if there's something that I'm not sure about, I go through and I check it out. I do my own research, of course. I want to know... You know, th for this project, really, what are what are going to be the benefits? Mm -hmm. What's the cost? Mm -hmm. And are we going to get that back? Mm -hmm. And how much is it going to really, really benefit? Right. The, and, and, the or cost? is it something the city should be doing? And at is all? it necessary? Yeah. So that Does it that's help something. Everybody, or is it just for just a for a select? Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and is there a public cause? Is it some private property? Um, things like that. Right, okay. and, and that's a, an important cost-benefit analysis to do too, like for instance in uh, tax increment financing mm -hmm. proposals. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody is coming to the council with a proposal for tax increment financing, TIF, for 25 years, you have to think to yourself, okay, now what is the life uh, lifespan, the longevity of this project. Right. I mean, is this building expected? Is this build business expected to last beyond 
25 years, and when the tax years, increment financing is years, over, right? Are they still going to? Are they just going to take up and leave? Right. And we lose because all that revenue when they got the financial deal. And right. we and we got none of the increase of the uh, benefit of the increased uh, property taxes mm -hmm. because of that development. And so right. that's something that has to be looked at. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, another problem I've seen in Maplewood is a. Uh, a lack of diversity of opinions on uh, commissions. Right. It, it's pretty much been, you know, we get our philosophy in there and that's all there's going to be, which I think is a big problem because you don't have create creativity going on and not necessarily having an opposite opinion, which should be there, right. but uh, just different mindsets and ways to tackle problems. Oh, absolutely. And I think the demographics of our city shows there's a need. We mm -hmm. need diversity for sure. Mm -hmm. We um, well, you know, we have I, diversity in this city, no, but we need our, it on our commissions. We need it on our commissions and on any of the, our boards and everything. But because there's so many people that use our parks, for instance, mm -hmm. I ran into a guy out door knocking the other day. Mm -hmm. You know, he 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 wants to be on the parks commission. There's never any room. There's yeah. people that are have been waiting and applying for years to be on our human rights commissions. Mm -hmm. And it says there's <laughs> been vacancies. I and wonder who keep, can't get on the human and, rights and commission. They keep saying they're I don't full. know who that is. <laughs> so I've had Hispanic people. I've had Hmong people. Hmm. Tell me all. Tell me the same thing. The other day, I, really? I got a guy from Argentina. And these these people, their opinions. There's great value in their opinions, yeah. and I think we'd we'd get a lot, lot of engagement with the community if we had some diversity on yeah. our commissions for sure. Okay. And I'm I tell you, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> All right. Well, you brought up parks, and we're running out of time, so we're going to kind of go quicker on some okay. of these things. But I forgot totally about the videos we had on parks. Uh, so um, in the control room, let's run the first video on parks. I don't know if they're paying attention right now. Matter of fact, I don't think they are. <laughs> okay, so let's run that first video on the parks. And, and I believe that this is or from is it Sept parks? Yes, it's yes. From, well, it's from, yeah, it's from the Parks Commission, uh, September 26, 2012. Okay. Opportunities to uh, uh, look at other parks that aren't being used and and we'll have to come up with a priority and uh, these decisions are going to you know basically be, be presented to the park commission for recommendations but this is something that staff is working on for next year and uh, we're going to develop a comprehensive park system plan that's going to look at everything comprehensively but more importantly financing our parks for the next 20 to 30 years and uh, those are going to be difficult discussions. Uh, they're going to impact residents, uh, but uh, those are decisions that uh, this uh, Park Commission is going to have to champion, and you're going to have to be out in front of. Uh, and this is, this, is a, this is exactly some of the issues that we could be looking at in the next two, three, four, five years with our parks, and uh, we don't have the funding stream that we used to have is just not there anymore, folks. We've got 36 parks. We've got 14 preserves. Uh, we don't have the wherewithal or resources to adequately maintain these as they exist today. So when we go forward uh, and develop this comprehensive park system plan, these are the decisions that you're going to have to make. And uh, it, it, it may result in a reduction of uh, our parks that we currently have as part of our system. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but these are decisions that you're going to have to make. And they're tough. They're hard. Uh, but we want to maintain our parks, too. And we got to, as a park commission, look at things comprehensively. And, and it's, it's tough stuff. So I, I uh, you know, I, it, this is tough stuff. But uh, this is something, this is the flavor of what we're going to be looking at going forward. And uh, it's not easy, but, uh, you know, this is uh, part of our vision, so. There was the example, in my mind, of the, the staff telling what they wanted the Parks Commission to do. Uh, and there's where dig, digging down and, and asking the hard questions. He was doing a sales job. We got a tough situation. It wasn't really that tough. And it might um, include the reduction of, of our, our parks. A reduction the, of our parks. The only way I know that you can reduce your parks 
is by sale. Yeah, and and we got more money. Uh, Maplewood's got more money than they've ever had, but now we got this financial crisis with our parks. Right, and and, and, and our keep, parks are the problem. Yeah, and keep in mind the maintenance of our parks is money that comes out of the operational budget that is from property taxes. Mm -hmm. And so don't get confused by when they start talking about that there's less PAC money versus that they can't maintain. You can't use PAC funds mm -hmm. to maintain your parklands because right. state law doesn't allow it. And so when they say there's a reduction in PAC fees, that doesn't have anything to do with the maintenance, the mowing, the maintenance of our parks. That's done by operational dollars. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, this is the other thing I couldn't think of before when you asked me about my service. I also serve on the Maplewood Park System Priority Task Force. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he was talking to you? Well, no. He kind was talking of? to the <laughs> no. Parks Commission, but they've brought that up at the um, task force meetings. Uh -huh. And they keep saying, we have to come to a consensus. Well, you know, they haven't really, we haven't really had much discussions Mm -hmm. They've basically been just telling us about what the comprehensive plan says and things. And if their idea of uh, prioritizing parks is to sell them, that's not even close to what I'm thinking because I'm totally against selling parks. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if they want to work to improve the parks that we have, why aren't they working with the conservation district? They can. They have cost share well, programs available. They, they have keep money available. That's yep. right. But you would have to communicate. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and, all, and, and I went to my conservation district board and I said, let's write a letter of support for Maplewood to preserve Fish Creek. Preserve it, not to develop it, to preserve it. So I championed that with the Ramsey Conservation mm -hmm. District and I wrote the letter and, mm -hmm. and got it in there. Mm -hmm. But no, I am totally against selling parks. That's outrageous. Why would you think of that? Yeah. Okay, call. We have another phone call. We're running out of time. Call her, make it quick. You have a comment or question? I'd like to ask Diana and um, Margaret, what will you do to bring in new business into Maplewood? New businesses into Maplewood. Good, good, here. good, thank, good thank question. You. Good point. There, yeah. there are a lot of businesses that want to come to Maplewood, and they are waiting until this election's over to see if they want to follow through with that. Right. There's been some bus businesses that I was a community rep for businesses as a, a business manager for years. So I, I got to know all the business folks in the city, and they they take their businesses out of the city because they feel harassed by certain council members. Mm -hmm. They they have developed the, the roads and stuff so it makes their business really hard for their customers to access. Mm -hmm. They get harassed about their signage. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a city that is not business friendly. They are right. more policing the businesses instead yes. of engaging them and welcoming them. And I have a plan and, for that too. Oh, okay. <laughs> And, and one thing that I know that Maplewood has not done that we need to do is that we need to do a, a comprehensive inventory of all the different types of industry business sectors that we have. Right. And then we need to understand how that meets the needs of the future demographics, what employment sectors are projected to be expanding in the future, the next 25 years, and how can we encourage those particular up and coming businesses and we got to make sure that the zoning and the land use uh, is designation is appropriate along the right. transportation right. corridors so they don't have a lot of regulation and red tape they can just come in the zoning's already correct for them right. and they're ready to go and right now we have a place where the zoning's all there and ready to go and developers ready and Maplewood just says no we don't want you uh, there is that too <laughs> and that just goes to show you uh, spot uh, selective uh, business selection. And we need sustainable businesses mm -hmm. with dis sustainable jobs that's going to help our hometown economy grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, another area that I think would really help for disclosure is uh, each department having an annual report, you know, where they would make a presentation to the city council and says, here's what we did this last year. Here's where, you know, and, and not just a quick financial report, but a detailed report as to their activities and what they've done. Yeah, and, you know, I think at, at the workshop, they... Uh, the city council the, workshop? The council, city council workshop, 
they they do that at a certain level, but it's yeah, not it's the not, a detail that. No, I've been there, and yeah. that's not. And it really kind of glosses over right. things because they're trying to get two, three departments in during one session. Uh, I, I think it could be more detailed so that not only the citizens understand better, but the council members understand it better. Mm -hmm. Right, and yeah. I think that's helpful when you're making decisions that's going to affect all the taxpayers. Yeah. You have to know what's going on. Yeah. All right, we got about a minute left, somewhere around there. So I'm going to give you about uh, 30 seconds to a minute to wrap up as you know, give your pitch out there why they should vote for you. Well, I'm Diana Longry, and I'm running for mayor of Maplewood. November 5th is the election date, and I would appreciate your vote. If you want to find out more about my views, please go to dianalongry.com, and there's everything you would ever want there. Thank you so much. And I'm Margaret Behrens. I'm your current representative at the Ramsey Conservation District. And I want to represent you and your family at the Maplewood City Council. You can go to my website at margaretbehrens.com and see some of my views. And I would appreciate your support and your vote on November 5th as well. It's people, prosperity, and promise for the future. And we all deserve better in Maplewood. Thanks. And everybody, thank you for watching Speechless. We're glad to have all the calls that came in today. And remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And good men don't do nothing. God bless. Have a great week. Sets on fire.